Hi, it's Seta here. In this video I will show you a script that allows you to replace trees added as a terrain trees with regular prefabs. Let's get started. Imagine that you are creating a survival game where the player can cut down trees to collect woods. At first glance it seems simple because you just need to place appropriate prefabs with script on the scene. The problem is that if you are placed too many of them, it will affect performance. On the other hand, using the terrain tree system solves the performance issue, but in this case the player cannot interact with the tree because Unity does not allow adding script to them. And this is exactly where the script, which you can download from the link in the video description, can help you. So, after downloading the script, let's add a new game object to the scene and name it Replacer. And then attach our script into it. In the inspector window, a few sections will appear, which we will go through step by step. First, we have terrain. This is where we specify which terrain the script fetches all three instances from, which contains data about the tree placed using the terrain tree system. Each tree stores information about its position in space, scale and rotation. Based on this, the script builds a grid of cells that allow us to quick locate a specific tree in the game world. Next, in the camera, we assign the player's camera from which a raycast will be sent to detect the tree to replace. Below, in the interaction section, we find parameters that control the replacement. In replace key, we set the key used for replacement. Of course, the script can be easy modified so that instead of checking for a preset key, it reacts to any event in the game, for example when axe hitting the trunk. In interaction distance, we set the maximum length of the raycast. That is, how far from the camera the ray should check for hits. Next, in the radius from hit point, we define the radius around the hit point. This is the area when the script check if the tree pivot is present. If we set this to 1, the script will only look for pivots very close to the hit point. So, if a player standing on uneven ground hits a tree more than 1 meter high, the tree will not be replaced by the new one. However, if we set it to 3, even if the player hits the tree in the higher point, the tree will still be replaced. Below, we have performance section. In the cell grid, we set the size of each grid cells into which the terrain is divided. All trees are indexed in the grid structure, so during the search, the script only checked 9 cells, the central one and 8 neighborhood cells. This significantly improves performance because it does not search the whole terrain every time, but only the cells closest to the hit point. Below, in the dispound distance, we set the distance at which prefab is removed and replaced with the original tree from terrain trees. This prevents the game from becoming overloaded with hundreds of prefabs that the player has replaced and left behind. Next, in the Plymouth Mode option section, we can check Restore Trees. If we do so, the script clones the terrain data at the start and working on the copy. This means that even if we cut down the trees during testing, after exiting play mode, the terrain will return to its initial state. If the option is unchecked, the changes will be applied permanently to the original terrain. The last option is Replacements, which is a list of tree names from the terrain trees and the prefab they should be replaced with. By clicking the plus button, we first add the name of the tree as it appears in the terrain tree system. And below it, we assign the prefab that will replace it. This way, when our raycast detects a tree, the script look up its name on this list and if found it, replace it with the assigned 3D models, preserving its position, scale and rotation. And that's all we need to set up. The script works in a very simple way. At the start, it retrieves all the tree from the terrain and stores the data in a grid of cells. 
When we press key, the script performs a raycast from the camera. If the ray hits a tree in the scene, the script checks whether the name of the tree at the hit location is on the replacement list. If so, the script removes the tree from the terrain data and plays the corresponding 3D models in that place. This search is performed only horizontally, so the closest tree to the hit point is always selected. All replaced prefabs are also added to the separate list so the script can manage them. This means that if we move away from the tree, beyond the despawn distance, the prefab is removed and the original terrain tree is restored. And now, since we have everything set up, we can move on to the play mode and check it. If we approach a tree and press G, it will be replaced with a prefab. However, when we move away, the prefab will be removed and the tree will return to the terrain. And that's all in this video. If you have any questions, write them in the comments below. The script along with the comments for each line of code can be found in the description of this video. And those who support the channel at tier 2 or higher can download a sample project with an extended script that includes options to remove the terrain tree collider after cutting down a tree, add a rigid body to the tree to make it fall to the ground, spawn other prefabs when the counter reaches zero, a function that remembers the tree life counter even when the player walks away from it, and much more. So I warmly invite you to support the channel. And until next time. See ya.